Hello everyone and welcome to Let's Play Boulder's Gate 3. Oh man, I'm so excited. It's been a long time coming. It's been a long time coming. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Heliax. Uh, we play RPGs here. And uh, yeah, we've been waiting for this game for... Well, really since the channel started. Uh, this has been on my radar. Um, we just finished playing the first two games. Uh, we finished that series, Boulder's Gate 2, Sunday, so four days ago. Uh, and yeah, I've been really excited to play this game out. Uh, Larian is phenomenal. I played both Divinity 1 and Divinity 2 Original Sin. And uh, those games are great, and I'm expecting this one to be just as good. Now, <clears throat> before we begin couple things number one I did play this game uh, in early access when it first came out three years ago uh, so I'll know a couple of things that happened but my memory is not great so I don't remember everything which is good for me uh, and I didn't play too much of it like I didn't finish all of that was available in the early access I don't think I even got close this game is supposed to be super big uh, from what I've been hearing which is exciting and a little intimidating. It's going to be a while. We're going to be here for a while, so I hope you like this game. Um, step number... Or, not step number two. The next thing we need to talk about is... Mainly for people who are new to the channel. If you've been here, then you know. Um, and that's the style. So, just in case you don't like what I'm pitching you now, you can leave if you want. Uh, so, I like to be super thorough. I, we try to complete all quests we can do. And I try to... It's not a full completion run or anything like that, but I do try to be as thorough as is enjoyable for me, which tends to be most content in the game. And I also do try to roleplay our character. Now, I don't do voices or accents or anything like that. I just don't have that talent in me. But uh, we do try and get into the head of our character, their psychology, why they're making certain choices and make choices based off of them and not necessarily what is best for the game itself. Um... So if you're into that kind of thing, welcome. It's good to have you. Now, uh, I can't wait any longer. I don't know about you guys. It took a long time for me to install this game. So uh, <laughs> I'm excited. Let's just go ahead and jump in the new game here. Difficulty. So we've got Explorer, Balanced, and, a t and Tactician. A tough campaign emphasizing strategic combat. We have Balanced, a balanced adventure full of challenging choices and explorer a narrative experience placing story before combat now <clears throat> the uh, ego in me wants to go with tactician right oh that's a cool picture too it's tempting me it's drawing me in uh yeah my ego says i should go tactician my prior experience <laughs> with larian games Lends me to leads me to think I should go with balanced, but fuck it, we're gonna go tactician. Let's do this. The elephants. Look at that guy. This is so interesting from what we saw. In Boulder's Gate 2 with the Illithids too. A Gith Yankee. She's pretty. Oh, that flesh. Ugh. Oh, a little tadpole. Ain't that cute. Okay, maybe not so cute. <laughs> 
Oh god. Ugh. That's not cool. Hey, you stay away from me. Hey, get him. Don't you. Nah, I'm good, thank you. Oh god. Keep your eyes open, guys. <laughs> That's a <laughs> terrifying situation to be in. Enable tutorials. Oh, tutorials can help you learn about the core mechanics of Baldur's Gate 3. Would you like to turn them on? I suppose, I don't think I need them. But we'll, we'll, we'll keep them on for now. Okay, so character creation. This already looks a lot different than, um, than, um, what am I trying to say? Than the early access, just like the, the layout here. Um, I did recently, like, make a character, not like all the way through, just to get the look, because I was using it for the thumbnail. Um, yeah. So I know what kind of character I want to be. Which is kind of different than what I usually go with. Usually I go in there without really thinking much about our character. But I know what we want to be, so... However, I do like taking our time and going through all the options here. To both let me know what kinds of characters are possible. I think that helps with knowing what your companions are all about, too, when you get them. And also for anybody who's not very familiar with the system, maybe it'll be a good... Um, a good little thing for you guys too. So, this is based off of Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, uh, which is the edition I know best, unlike the first two games which were based off of, off of AD&D. Um, so I know this system a lot better. I don't want to I don't want to hype myself up too much cuz I'm probably going to make a ton of mistakes still, but I should know it to a more respectable respectable degree. So, we have Origin custom right now so we have custom origin origin and just like divinity original sin 2 you can also play as the characters here um oh that's the get the Yankee. so we can play as her so you can play as one of these characters here oh she's got a lot of options just taking a look at him no oh, she looks cool the Dark Urge. Oh, he looks badass. Look at him. Holy shit. Oh, he looks so cool. <laughs> she looks really cool, too. All these characters look really cool. Except for Gale. Look at this guy. Yeah, he looks fine. <laughs> okay. We're obviously going to do a custom one. Um, do we want to read through? I'm, we can play introductions. Should we do that? I don't know. Are we going to hear their stories throughout the game? I don't know. I kind of want to not do that. And we'll... Um, and we'll... Um, learn about them through the game. That's what I'm hoping will happen anyway. We can randomize. And it looks like we can make pre-mades. I'm guessing what the, that's what these uh, arrows are for. Okay. So... I'm not going to worry about too much over here yet. Let's go to the next page. Our race. Alright, so we have Elf. We're going to go through each race and uh, read the little description and their features. So, with the Elf, with ethereal countenance and long lifespans, Elves are at home with nature's power, flourishing in light and dark alike. They, are, they have base racial speed of 9 meters per turn. Okay. Elven weapon training. You have proficiency with long swords, short swords, short bows, and long bows. You have dark vision, so you can see in the dark up to 12 meters. Fey ancestry. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed, and magic can't put you to sleep. So based off the first, the first one and this third one here, we can see that the uh, the distances here are going to be a little scaled down from what they would be in like a tabletop setting, because usually it's like a, I think it's based off of like five meter squares typically and then we have the tiefling here the tiefling is our the tieflings are descended from devils of the nine hells tieflings face constant suspicion in Faerun. thankfully their arcane 
abilities that make them natural survivors. Yeah, tieflings are cool. So your racial speed is 9 meters. That's going to be typical. Most people are going to be 9 meters. Uh, that's for your basic races. Medium-sized races. You have dark vision as well. And you have hellish resistance. You have resistance to fire damage, taking only half damage from it. Okay, that, that's probably pretty useful at times. That's a good trait to have, I think. We have the drow. And if you've watched my first two uh, playthroughs of the first two games, you'll know I love the drow. I almost picked drow, but that's not who we're going to play. Driven to the Underdark, most drow have adopted a ruthless pragmatism. While the loth sworn delight in the goddess's evil tenets, the Sand or Seldarine reject her attempt to overthrow the leader of the Elven Pantheon. So you have nine movement speed. Drow weapon profi proficiencies, rapiers, short swords, and hand crossbows. You also have superior dark vision, so you can see up to 24 meters in the dark, so double what dark vision is. And you have fey ancestry as well. Advantage on saving those against being charmed and magic can't put you to sleep. Are these changing over here? I think this is probably from the class. Second wind, yeah. Although you get cantrips. Oh, tieflings get produced flame. A flame in your hand sheds light in a 9 meter radius and deals 1d or 1 to 8 fire damage when thrown. Huh. Oh, you have something too. You have firebolt, cantrip. 1d 10 damage. Hurls a moat of fire. Cool. Now, interestingly enough, these guys didn't have like uh, racial proficiencies for weapons, tieflings. That's interesting. And then we have everybody's favorite, humans. Just kidding. Well, maybe. I don't know. I bet most people play humans. Uh, the most common, uh, the most common face in Faerun. Humans are known for their tenacity, creativity, and endless capacity for growth. So Faerun, if I'm not mistaken, is that the name of the world or is that the name of the specific continent we're on? I can't remember. I think it might be the, the name of the world and then the specific region we're in is called the Forgotten Realms, right? And then even more specific, we're in the Sword Coast, I believe. So humans, nine meters speed. You have civil militia. You have weapon proficiency with spears, pikes halberds and glaives and armor proficiency with light armor and shields and you also get human versatility select an additional skill to be proficient in your carrying capacity is increased by a quarter oh that's nice i, I also just now noticed you have an inspect button oh that just makes it so i don't have to um hover over it i see and then we have gith yankee who we saw in that cut scene there uh and we have pretty much figured out that's gonna be one of our companions. So the Githyanki, who we've only seen briefly in uh, Baldur's Gate 2. We saw them briefly when we were in the Underdark. So with a ruthlessness born from mind flayer enslavement, Githyanki ride the Astral Sea atop red dragons, bringing their silver swords and psionic might to bear against any trace of the Illithid menace. Yeah, so these guys kind of like travel through space and time fighting the Illithids. Who are also kind of space and time travelers. I don't know if time is really an element to it, but I know they travel through like space. So they have astral knowledge as an action. So they get their own action. Gain proficiency in all skills of a chosen ability. Hmm. Well, that's pretty strong. You can use it every once every long rest, it looks like. They also get cantrips, psionic githyanki psionics, mage hand conjuration cantrip creates an invisible spectral hand that can manipulate and interact with objects that's pretty cool and then race features you can move nine meters and you also get martial prodigy a lifetime of relentless training gave you armor proficiency with light and medium armor as well as proficiency with the short sword long sword and great sword awesome did yeah that's weird that the cantrip didn't show up for these guys in this area, but it shows up here for them. Hmm. And then we have one of my favorite, besides the drow, another one of my favorite races, the dwarf. As durable and unyielding as their homes of stone, dwarves are some of the finest warriors, miners, and smiths of Faerun. So they have a base speed of 7.5 meters per turn. So dwarves, gnomes, and halflings are all gonna have this speed, I believe 
to indicate their smaller frame. Dwarven combat training. You have proficiency with the battle axe, hand axe, light, hammer, and war hammer. You have dark vision, 12 meters. And dwarven resilience. You have advantage on saving throws against poison. That's pretty good. And you have resistances, resistance to poison damage. Okay, that's pretty good. I, I'm a big fan of anything that stops poison damage. Half-elf. Again, one of my favorite races. Uh, this is probably the race I've played the most of when I've uh, been a player in tabletop games. Curious, ambitious, and versatile. Half-elves are welcome everywhere, but struggle without a community to call their home. Or own, rather. Nine meters of speed. A civil militia. You have weapon proficiency with spears, pikes, halberds, and glaives. And armor proficiency with light armor and shields. You have dark vision, so 12 meters. And bay ancestry. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed. And magic can't put you to sleep. So they basically have some the proficiencies of humans and then like all the special things of elves with the dark vision and everything. Which is nice. Then we have the halfling. Small yet capable. Halflings prefer the comforts of home and hearth. But their natural luck and dexterity make them fine adventurers. So as a halfling, we would get racial speed 7.5. Uh, lucky, when you roll a 1 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the die and must use the new roll. Now, is this something that I can only use once per rest or something, or I can use it every time? It doesn't specify here. And then you also have Brave. You have advantage on saving throws against being frightened, which is nice. And you get Second Wind, uh, which is 1d10 plus 1 points of healing. Draw on your stamina to heal yourself. Do you guys all have cantrips too? Yeah, you have the, the firebolt and the second wind. You just have second wind. Uh, you also have second wind and astral knowledge. Oh, we've already seen that one. Humans, did you have something? Second wind, okay. All right, so the gnome. Small, clever, and energetic. Gnomes use their long lives to explore Faerun's brightest corners and darkest depths. Now, unlike the gnomes of Pathfinder, I don't believe these gnomes suffer from the, from the, uh, what's it called? The bleaching, where they, like, get old if they don't experience new things. I don't think they do. They have the racial speed of 7.5 meters and gnome cunning. You have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Pretty good. The dragonborn. Oh, they look so good. Holy crap. Oh my god, I almost want to change what my character is going to be, guys. Look how cool they look. Oh my goodness. A proud race that values clan and skills above all else. Once enslaved by dragons, they strive to be self-sufficient, not wanting to be beholden to anyone, not even the gods. They have one racial, racial feature, which is their speed, 9 meters. They do have two actions, which weren't over there. They have acid breath. So this is a breath weapon. Spew forth a cone of acid, dealing 2d6 damage. Damn, that's a really good action. On save target, still takes half damage. It's a deck save. Neat. And you have second wind, too. Do gnomes have anything here? Just second wind. And then finally, you have the half orc. Creatures of intense emotion, half orcs are more inclined to act than contemplate. Whether the rage burning their bodies compels them to fight, or the love filling their hearts inspires acts of incredible kindness. So they've got speed of 9 meters, dark vision 12 meters, you have relentless endurance, if you reach 0 hit points you gain 1 hit point, instead of becoming downed, so you get basically one more round of of combat before you go down if you get hit again and you have savage attacks when you land a critical hit with a melee weapon attack, your damage dice are tripled instead of doubled damn that's really good that's actually really strong. Wow. Okay. All right. So, as I stated, we already know what we're going to be playing. And it's going to be... I already said it's not going to be a drow. It's going to be... A halfling. We're going to play a halfling. Get our... Our... Uh, our I guess I can't say that... Am I allowed to say hobbit in D&D? &D? Uh, get our Frodo on here. So, and we're also going to be... Uh, we're going to be male. And it is just body type, right? It, we're not, like, selecting gender anywhere. Okay. Yeah, it's just the body types. We could randomize our appearance, but I already know what I want to look like. 
So let's go ahead and edit our appearance here. See what we got here. So body type. Oh yeah, we identify as male. Okay. So you can be, you can look like a female and identify as, oh, non-binary. That's kind of nice. Identify. All right, that's pretty cool. All right, so voices. I think we just, I think I'm going to pick voice one. Where to next? Hmm. What was that? That's pretty, pretty nice. Let's hope the locals are friendly. Hells, something just woke up down here. Actually, that was... This place is trapped. It's opened. I kind of like that one. More of those wretched things. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. Hmm. I can feel... Where to next? Hmm. What was that? Let's hope the locals are friendly. Pals. Something just woke up down here. Be wary. Yeah. This place is trapped. We're going to go with this one. All right, so these are... I don't remember this part. So we got more faces than we did in early access. Might have to redo my uh, my thumbnail before I release this. It's going to be a late episode. Ooh, I kind of like that. I mean, it's not the prettiest of individuals, but... Got some scars going on here. I think that might have been what I picked. But to be honest, I really like this one. This one really spoke to me. It's got character, you know? Yeah, I like that one. We're going to go with that. I'm going to have to redo the, the thumbnail, but that's fine. All right, our skin tone. Oh, my goodness. You can have any color you want. <laughs> oh, man. We're not going to do that, though. Um, our skin tone, we're going to have, like... Hmm. Huh, I, I feel like these aren't really matching what I'm seeing. Um, I think that one's probably good right there. Maybe a little darker. Yeah, that one right there is good. Okay. Uh, scarring... We're going to be kind of a young character, so we're not going to have any scarring. Although, damn, that one looks gnarly, huh? That one looks cultish. The eye one. Got to have the got to have the one that goes across the eye. Got to have that one. Do you have the lip one too? Yeah, we got the lip one. Got to have those two iconic ones. Yeah, no scars. Maturity. All right, so we can get some wrinkles. Yeah, I've already said we're going to be kind of young. Can have freckles. Kind of nice. Do we want freckles? I have a little bit of freckles. I can change the intensity of it too. Uh, yeah, probably right around. Where are they? Right there's probably good. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice all these tabs. Oh my god, there's a lot more. <laughs> We're gonna be here for days, guys. Um. Oh, okay, so. And then body art. Oh my god, there's so many tattoos. Are there only tattoos for the face, though? Mm. I never like it when games only have tattoos for the face. This is what I originally had. I had this little tattoo, but I'm not sure I want it anymore. Some birds. I'm not sure we're going to have tattoos. There's a neck tattoo. That's probably about as good as we're going to get in terms of having like a, a body tattoo, huh? So... Reminds me of like a Diablo tattoo. We're marking. Look at that thing. You know what? We're going to get that uh, neck tattoo. Where is it at? Where is it? There it is. Yeah, we're going to go with the neck tattoo. And it's a rose, right? Get a little. Uh, I wish we could change the colors. I mean, if we can't change the colors, we'll just leave it black. Yeah. Uh, piercing style. Oh, yeah. We're going to have some piercings. Fastened star. Okay. And an eyebrow piercing, too. Lapis stud muffin. <laughs> Subduer loops. Okay. Midnight tears. I wonder how many of these there are. Hmm. I'll know what I want when I see it. I kind of liked the first one we saw, to be honest. The eyebrow piercing. 
Easy breezy. Hmm. Some barred rings. Yeah, I like the fastened stars. Yeah, we're gonna go with that one. I, I don't know. I like it. It's an interesting character. <laughs> um, anything else in this one? No. Eyes. So you can have multicolor eyes? Yeah. So I'm not gonna do that. And I want some nice hazelnut eyes. Yeah, those right there. No, right, that one was easy. Makeup. We are gonna have a little bit of makeup. Um, just some eyeliner. And I'll explain why if I need a reason to explain. Um, do you want... Yeah, just that one's fine. Yeah, and that's all we wanted to do with that. Hair. Okay, so hair-wise. Let's go ahead and pick our color first before we do anything crazy. We're gonna have some brown hair. Maybe some like light brown. That's blonde strawberry. Blonde, blonde, blonde. Ooh, blonde gold, baby. Now nah, we want some brown. I like a light brown. Hmm. This is probably as light as we get, right? You want some highlights? Ah, nah, we don't want any highlights. And no graying either. Okay. Might darken that hair a little bit. Okay. Let's move down to the male hairstyles or more masculine hairstyles. Alright. I want to try and get like a a good halfling style coming on. I know halflings tend to have like curlyish hair, right? I'm really just basing everything off of <laughs> Tolkien. Let's see if you can find some curly ish. That's kind of curly. It's wavy. There's some nice locks there. I don't think we want that long of hair, though. Let's see here. Oh, that one's got. Oh, I didn't want the ponytail, though. Okay, let's keep looking here. Rapscallion. There you go. Well, kind of like that one, even with... I think that might have actually been the one I picked for the thumbnail. I'm looking at it. That was not bad. Anything else here? Looks like we're getting back into more feminine styles. Okay, I think this is the one. I think that's the one. Yeah. This guy's not going to win any, any awards for, for good looking. I'm going to go there and say that right now. We're all gonna have a beard. You know what? That or groom a little longer. Oh yeah, there we go. Want to mess with the? Yeah, that'll be good. Well, uh, the, the top top hair is kind of a little lighter than I would like. We go just like straight brown. I like that right there. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, God, wait. <laughs> what have I done? Edit appearance. Okay, facial hair. We can make this a little lighter so it matches the hair a little more. Oh, no, it's changing that hair, too. Okay. Do I want to just go brown? Yeah, I think that looks better. Confirm. And no graying here, either. All right, so I think we have that set now. So go back to edit character. All right, so as a halfling, we have two sub races to pick from. We've got Lightfoot halflings, which are stealthy but social. These halflings travel all over Faerun to make names for themselves, and we get sub race feature. You have advantage on stealth checks, and then we have strong heart halflings. Which I think are stout halflings, right? Legend has it that dwarven blood gave strong hearts their hardiness. Resistant to poison and wellsprings of endurance, these halflings easily hold their own. So you have advantage on saving things against poison and resistance to poison damage. Oh shit, that would change my. Wait. 
Okay, I was I thought it might have like undone undid my uh my character creation. Well, I guess if we were gonna pick strong card, <laughs> we'd be um having to redo our character, huh? Well, luckily this is what we're we're gonna be a light foot halfling anyway, um, which means we are gonna be playing potentially another stealthy character, guys. Uh, I know, but it'll be different. It'll be a lot different than our thief from the first two games, hopefully. All right, um, so class is next. So let's go ahead and read through the classes. So we have a barbarian here. The strong embrace of the wild that hides inside. Keen instincts, primal phys physicality, and most of all, an unbridled, unquenchable rage. You have the rage action. So while raging, you are stronger, and you deal two extra damage with melee and improvised weapons and when throwing objects. Looks like there's more. Oh, yeah. You have resistances to physical damage and advantage on strength checks and saving throws. Lasts for 10 turns. I believe is that what... Or you have 10 turns of rage. Rage ends early if you don't attack an enemy or take damage each turn. You can't cast or concentrate on spells while raging. Yep. I'm actually uh, in the D&D game that my friends running for us, which we're starting on Saturday. It's all... D and D week here. Um, I'm playing a barbarian. Unarmored defense. While not wearing armor, you're, you add your Constitution modifier to your armor class, so your your AC would be your Dex and Con plus ten, uh, which is kind of cool. We are not going to be a barbarian though. And well, then we have a bard. You know, music is more than a fancy; it is power. Through study and adventure, you have mastered song, speech. And the magic within. All right, so you have cantrips. You get two cantrips. You get vicious mockery, which is one d four psychic damage. Insult a creature, and it has disadvantage on its next attack roll. Which disadvantage, if you don't know, makes you less likely to succeed. Roll two dice and use the lower value negated by advantage. So advantage means you roll two dice and you take the higher value. Yep. All right, so. We have Blade Word, Blade Ward, rather. Abjuration Cantrip. Take only half damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks. That's pretty nice. You start with two spells. Healing Word. You heal a creature you can see. I wonder if you actually get to pick different spells. You might be able to change these. You get Dissonant Whispers. Uh, 3d6 Sight. 3d6 Psychic Damage. And Frighten a Creature. It will be easier to hit and cannot move for two turns. Yeah, that's nice. Tasha's hideous laughter. I used something... I don't know if it was... Was it called Tasha's? We use hideous laughter a lot in our Pathfinder playthrough. Uh, leaves the creature prone with laughter without the ability to get up. Creature must have an intelligence of five or more. A target can try to shake off the offset or off the effect each time it takes damage. And then heroism. Make yourself or a target immune to frightened and gain five temporary hit points each turn. We also have Bardic Inspiration. You inspire an ally to add a 1d6 bonus to their next attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. And you get, uh, you can only, you'll have a X amount of them for each long rest. I believe it's based off your charisma modifier. Or at least it is in the tabletop. And then class feature, it's level one spell slots unlocked. Yep, yep, yep. You gain two level one spell slots, which are restored on a long rest. Okay, so, um, what is this? Oh, details, proficiencies, weapons, simple weapons, hand crossbows, long, long swords, rapiers, and short swords, and light armor. So, then we have the cleric. Clerics are representatives of the gods they worship, wielding potent divine magic for good or ill. You have three cantrips. You have resistance, guidance, and sacred flames. Resistance gives you some resistance, right? A 1d4 on saving throws. Uh, guidance, 1d4 on uh, ability check. And then Sacred Flame is 1d8 radiant damage. You get Guiding Bolt, which is a really strong spell. Uh, 46 radiant damage on a, a successful attack roll. Healing Word, you can inflict wounds, which is a necromancy. 3d10 necrotic damage. Damn, that's really strong too. 
These damages seem like they are scaled a little higher than uh, what they normally would be. Uh, level 1 Abjuration Spell, Shield of Faith, Armor Class by 2 increase. And Bane, up to 3 creatures receive a 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. Uh, you get level 1 spells and domain spells. So as a cleric, you get to pick a domain belonging to the god that you worship. And it gives you extra bonuses and spells. Alright, the druid. Oh my god, there's so many classes. <laughs> I forgot how long this is going to take explaining each one. Should I explain each one? Uh, maybe we'll just read the description from now on. Druids channel the elemental forces of nature and share a deep kinship with animals. Mastery of wild shape allows them to transform into beasts from all over the realms. And you have the fighter. Fighters have mastered the art of combat, wielding weapons with unmatched skill and wearing armor like a second skin. You have the monk. Channel your cosmic enlightenment by deftly dodging and eff efficiently disassembling your foes through stunning strikes and a whirlwind of martial art attacks. You have the paladin. Oh, that's... I like the armor. Fueled by the oath you swore to uphold justice and righteousness, you are a beacon of hope in dark times. The ranger. Rangers are unrivaled scouts and trackers honing a deep connection with nature in order to hunt their favorite prey. The rogue. With stealth, skill, and uncanny reflexes, rogue's versatility lets them get the upper hand in most any situation. The sorcerer. Sorcerers are natural spellcasters, drawing on inherent magic from a gift or bloodline. Have the warlock. Bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron, warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic. And then finally, the wizard. Wizards master the arcane by specializing in individual schools of magic, combining ancient spells with modern research. So if you're not aware, if you're not familiar with these kinds of games, or D&D in general, um, you have three magic classes here, and basically uh, the difference is how they get their magic. Sorcerers are inherent and it changes the way you, you the way you cast spells. Wizards are arcane, you do knowledge. And then warlocks, kind of like a cleric in that they get it from a higher power. Yeah, anyway, what we're gonna be playing as is a bard. Hell yeah. And that's why we got the eyeliner, or a little bit of a rock star going on, you know. Gotta have that rock star life. Okay. So, can I change these? Am I allowed to change these? I don't think so. It doesn't seem like I can. I know in, uh, oh, never mind. I think that's the next page. So, cantrips. Okay, so, change your cantrip selection by choosing from the spell list below. Cantrips don't use spell slots and can be cast at will. So yeah, cantrips are pretty pretty important for spellcasters. So they give us Vicious Mockery and Blade Ward. We're going to get rid of both of them for now. We also have Mage Hand, which we saw with... Uh, was it the Gith Yankee had Mage Hand? You can create a Spectral Hand that can manipulate and interact with objects. That could be useful in this game if, if it's anything like the original Sin games. Which had a lot of environmental stuff. You have True Strike. Gain advantage on your next attack roll. This could be good. That's actually a really powerful spell, too. You have friends. Gain advantage on charisma checks against a non-hostile creature. Dancing lights illuminates a 9-meter nine nine radius. I don't know how... Like, dancing lights in the actual tabletop is usually pretty important. But I don't know how, um, how they're going to do lighting in this game. And then you have light, which is... In my opinion, the better one. Infuse an object with an aura of light, so it's basically like a torch. And then minor illusion create an illusion that completely or compels nearby creatures to investigate. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Okay, I think we are gonna get vicious mockery. It's always nice to have a cantrip that does damage for when you need to, and it gives a disadvantage to the creature if they fail their wisdom save. That's kind of cool. And I'm thinking true sight. I'm never gonna. No, I'm not gonna remember to do true star. I think mage hand is actually gonna be a more useful thing in this game. I just have a feeling. So we'll get vicious mockery and mage hand for our cantrips, and then our level one spells. 
We get four of them. Choose the spells you know from the list below. Spells require spell slots to cast unless a feature states otherwise. So yeah, we have four spell slots. Or maybe not. No, 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 no. We, I think it's we know these four spells and like if I want to cast Healing Ward four times, I can, but then I can't cast any of the other ones. I think that's how it works. Anyway, we've got Animal Friendship. Convince a beast not to attack you. We have Bane. Up to three creatures receive a minus 1d4 penalty on attack rolls and saving throws. Charm Person. Charm a humanoid to prevent it from attacking you. You gain advantage on charisma checks and dialogue. Cure Wounds. So 1d8 plus 3 healing spell. Disguise Self. Magically change all aspects of your appearance. Dissonant Whispers. Frighten a creature. It will be easier to hit and cannot move. And does 3d6 psychic damage. Fairy Fire. All targets within the light turn visible, and attack rolls against them have advantage. Featherfall, you and nearby allies gain immunity to falling damage. It's kind of situational. Healing Word, which is 1d4 plus 3 healing. So the difference here is this one's a touch spell, I believe. Yep, heal a creature you can touch, where this is a ranged spell. Does less healing, though. Heroism, make yourself or target immune to frightened in 5 to 3 hit points. Long Strider, increases a Creature's movement speed by 3 meters. Sleep. Put a creature into a magical slumber. Select targets up to a combined 24 hit points. Speak with animals. Gain the ability to comprehend and communicate with beasts. Tasha's hideous laughter. We've talked about that one already. And Thunder Wave. We just a wave of thunderous force that pushes away all creatures and objects. So I think this one does friendly fire, which is never... Which is something to always be mindful of. Alright, so the four that I'm going to pick... We're going to pick... Ooh. Yeah, we're going to pick Dissonant Whispers. Fairy Fire. Sleep. I mean, we have Sleep. I don't know if we need Tasha's... Hideous Laughter. I think Long Strider might be better since we have our since we're a small creature our movement speed is not very high so i think we'll we'll go with, with long strider yeah and i'm pretty sure these are things that i'll be able to change on like long rests and things okay our starting instrument pick the instrument you'd like to use it will influence the soundscape when you cast spells oh that's cool and it can be changed later by equipping a different instrument so we got the hand drum we had the flute we have the lute we have the lyre, and we have the violin. Ooh. Violins are cool. Violins sound beautiful. Can we hear, like, a sample? Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. The lyre. That's cool. A lyre is like a hand harp, right? A little bit. My friend has a harp, and it's awesome. <laughs> the classic, the lute. The flute is an instrument my dad actually played when he was a kid. Oh. I do love the flute, guys. I love the flute. Oh, hell yeah. I think we'll go with flute, though. Hell yeah. All right. Background. Soldier. This is... I, I don't know what we're going to pick here, so this is going to be new. Well, actually, it's probably going to be Entertainer. <laughs> Let's be honest. So we have Acolyte here. You have spent your life in service to a temple, learning sacred rites and providing sacrifices to the gods or gods that you worship. Serving the gods and discovering their sacred works will guide you to greatness. We have the Charlatan. You are an expert in manipulation, prone to exaggeration and more than happy to profit from it. Bending the truth and turning allies against each other will lead to greater success down the road. Deception, sleight of hand. That every Yeah, so your skills, insight, and religion. Criminal. You have a history of breaking the law and survive by leveraging less than legal connections. Profiting from criminal enterprises will lead to greater opportunities in the future. And your skills are deception and stealth. Entertainer, which is probably what will be. You live to sway and subvert your audience, engaging common crowds in 
highly and high society alike. Preserving art and bringing joy to the hapless and downtrodden heighten your charismatic aura, acrobatics, and performance. You're a folk hero. You're a champion of the common people, challenging tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless. Saving innocence in imminent danger will always or will make your legend grow. Animal handling and survival. Guild artisan. Your skill in a particular craft has earned you membership in a mercantile guild, offering privileges and protection while engaging in your art. Repairing and discovering rare crafts will bring new inspiration. Skills of insight and persuasion. Noble. This could be one we pick. Uh, you were raised in a family among the social elite, accustomed to power and privilege, accu accu accumulating renown, power, and loyalty will raise your status, history, and persuasion. We have the Outlander. You grew up in the wilds, learning to survive far from the comforts of civilization. Surviving unusual hazards of the wild will enhance your prowess and understanding, athletics, and survival. The Sage. You are curious and well-read. With an unending thirst for knowledge. Learning about rare lore of the world will inspire you to put this knowledge to greater purpose. Skills, arcane, or arcana, and history. The soldier. You are trained in battlefield tactics and combat. Having served in a militia, mercenary company, or other, or, or officer corps. Corps. Uh, show smart tactics and bravery on the battlefield to enhance your prowess. I don't know what this... All of these have these things. Or, like... What does it mean to enhance your prowess and learn more understanding and stuff? Do you get, like, bonuses if you play into your background? Athletics and intimidation. And finally, the urchin. After surviving a poor and bleak childhood, you know how to make the most out of very little. Using your street smarts bolsters your spirit for the journey ahead. Sleight of hand and stealth. Alright, yeah. We are going to go with entertainer. Acrobatics and performance. All right. And I think we just have our abilities. So, let's see here. So we can assign a plus two. And we get a bonus of a plus one. I thought... Wait a minute. Do we not get stuff for just, like, being who we are? Oh, shit. So our, our race isn't, and our class isn't giving, like, just ability points. We just get to assign them. Interesting. Let's go and clear this. Okay. So, char charisma is our main stat here. What is the recommended, actually? Let's see what they, what they gave us. So strength low, that's probably correct. Strength is probably going to be our dump stat. I mean, this isn't terrible. But really, a 17, we couldn't get that up to an 18. I think we could get that up to an 18. We could get that up to an 18. Come on. Come on. Um, I wish there was like a... Like you could roll these. I think that would be fun. If you could actually roll and put them in. That's a bit of a shame that you can't, actually. Alright, charisma. Oh, we can only go to a 17. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Um, I think we're going 12 there. Let's get... Okay, so we have three more points. That can't go any higher, huh? Okay. Is that what the recommended was? I think that is what the recommended... I think... <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, that was what the recommended was. I guess this is the best we can do, really. I mean... We could probably dump wisdom more and get, like, more con or something. Hmm. Yeah, we got our proficiency bonus here. Your proficiency bonus is added to ability checks and saving throws against skill. You are proficient... Against skill you are proficient in. Making them more likely to see... It is also added to your attack rolls when attacking with weapons you're proficient with. Increasing your chance to hit. And that goes up with your level. So our skills here. So let's see. So we get performance and acrobatics no matter what. And then we have deception, intimidation, and persuasion. I don't like the intimidation one. Let's get rid of that one. And let's go into stealth instead. 
Yeah. I don't think my guy's very intimidating. I don't really necessarily think he's much of a deceiver as either. We might get rid of that too. And maybe go... Hmm. Maybe percept. Nah, maybe we'll keep in deception. Yeah, I guess you, you know, maybe when you're performing, you need to deceive the audience a little bit. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, so <laughs> 50 minutes later, I think we are done. There's something I want to change about my look, though. A couple of things, actually. I think one, I want to get rid of the, I, I'm not digging the uh, piercings as much as I thought I would be. Where's that at? Yeah, not digging that. And I'm actually not really digging the, the beard. I don't, we don't get to see our unique face. I'm not really digging the hair either. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. I'm really not, I don't know. I'm not really digging the hair. I'm sorry that, you know, wasting time here, but. It's important you get the look right, you know? Like, I don't want to take away from his distinct facial features. And I think the beard and the hair were just kind of covering it up a little bit too much. Maybe some shorter hair. Oh, that's what I was doing. There was one that was, like, curly, but it had... Is it that one? Do I like that one? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Maybe I just don't like the color either. Let me just go straight black. Mm -hmm. I think we can go a lighter brown now without the beard. And I'm still not thinking that hair. I don't know. The hair's tough. That was not bad. What do you guys think about that one? I mean, it looks kind of dorky, but... I don't know. Hmm. This is tough. It's a tough decision. It's an important decision. But a tough one. Could go with just like a nice clean cut. Hmm. Alright. I gotta make a decision. Oh, there's some curly hair. He looks a little too blonde, though, now, doesn't he? I don't know. He's fine. He's fine. Alright, let's just pick one and go with it. I think we do want to go with this one. This is not a... Yeah, we're gonna go with it. It's done. Alright, and the name. <laughs> he looks goofy. <laughs> So this is a the name of I have played a halfling bard uh, in the pen and pencil version, and his name was Rook. And uh, I don't remember what he looked like. He probably didn't look like this. But Rook died super early on in the campaign. Uh, he died from a blizzard. Yep, he got caught in a blizzard and couldn't make it to safety in time, and froze to death at like level one. <laughs> <laughs> he had very low constitution, which maybe I should uh, do that. That's one thing. He was a very sickly man. Should we go with that? That would be interesting, right? Probably not. You know what? Fuck it. We're doing it. I'm going to lower your constitution. Khan's going to be our dump stat. I don't know. Maybe that's a little too much. <laughs> we'll go with that and... Uh, with that. Oh, you can actually get that up to 16. Oh. That's kind of a, a good thing. Of course, now we have this. We could do that. We're going to do that. There we go. All right. So, Rook. He is a bard. And he wants to be famous. He wants to, you know, be a famous bard. Tell great stories. Uh, and have his, his songs played by future generations of bards and taverns across the realm is his goal here. Uh, we don't pick up an alignment or anything, I noticed, but that's okay. He is going to be a, a good guy. We're done with the evil playthroughs for now, <laughs> but 
All right. I think it's time, guys. It's time to jump in. Rook. We're going to be with this guy for a long time, so make sure that we are happy with it. I do kind of like it. He's very distinct looking. He's very distinct looking. He did turn out to be kind of blondish, but that is brown, guys. That's what it says. He is brown. He's a brunette. All right. Let's proceed. Oh, what? Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, what is this? You need a guardian. Um. What is a guardian? What does that entail? Oh, shit. Um. I don't know who a guardian is, guys. Um. Should we make another halfling? I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of having a human guardian. You know? An Aragorn, if you will. An Aragorn to my uh, Frodo here. Okay, yeah, we'll go. We'll go with human. Um, sure, female's fine. Remarkable, truly. Follow your instinct. Remarkable. Oh, you only get two voices. Okay. Um, try to make this quick. You don't want him to look bad, though. You know, want him to look kind of good. Um, yeah, let's go with that, and we can get uh be a little bit darker. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. I mean, good. And then face your guardian. So you've probably been in a scrap or two, right? Yeah, get you a nice, uh, the, the classic old lip scar. You're a guardian, so you should be a little older, I think, than me, anyway. Um, don't need any body art. Uh, piercings. Sure, I'll give you that. Eyes. Sure, we'll give you this one, and you'll have one blue and one, uh, I don't know. Yeah, lavender or something. That's good. Yeah, I don't know. let's just give you some nice green eyes. Uh, makeup. Sh sure, you can have some makeup. <laughs> I don't really, yeah. Hair-wise. Uh, nice dark hair. Is that, um... Yeah, something like that. And then hairstyles. Do we want longer hair for you? Um... We don't pick her, her class, it doesn't look like. This is just looks. Okay. I kind of like that. Um, I'm gonna have some graying. Not too much. There you go. Uh, you don't need facial hair. Um, uh, oh, there's body types? Hold on. Oh. Oh, you could be, like, super muscular. I don't know if I'd known that. Did I pick their name or anything like that? Nope. I think we're good. Alright, there's my guardian. She looks kind of badass. She looks like she kicked my ass. Alright. Venture forth. Oh shit, we're back in this... This hellhole. Shit. This guy's not playing around.
Where's your air defense? Oh, watch out, guys. Oh, that has to be painful. Being dissolved like that and then reassembled. Alright, here come the Gith Yankee. Is this is this the city of Baldur's Gate? I don't think so. Maybe it is. God damn. Ooh. Good catch. This is what I was talking about earlier, how they could travel through like space and time kind of thing. Man, they look great. Holy hell. Holy shit. Did they take us to, to hell? Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Okay. <clears throat> I'm assuming we are the other guy that we get the first poison. First poison. First poison. <laughs> first person point of view. Oh, my goodness. Hey, that's me. Oh man, what a night. <laughs> okay. Oh, my head. Here we are, guys. Look at this. Journal updated escape. The, uh, Nautiloid. Basic movement. Move to start your adventure. Click the ground or hold the left mouse button. Yeah, so you can move around. Here we go. Wow, there's a lot going on here. Um, so there's our portrait of us. Inventory's there. We've got unarmed strike, hand crossbow. Use our melee weapon, use ranged weapon. Toggle dual wielding, toggle light source. So lighting is going to be our thing. We can jump, we can hide, we can throw, we can dash, we can disengage, range attack, mobile shot. What is that? Must have dash. Must have dash or disengage this turn. Okay. You can perform, play a tune to attract the, and delight those around you. Interesting. Dip. Dip a weapon into his surface to alter the surface or enhance the weapon. Oh, so like if there's like a pool of fire, I can dip my weapon into it or something. Or like poison. I can shove. Improvised melee weapon. I can help. Unarmed strike and piercing shot. 
got our Bardic Inspiration there. We've got Mage Hand, Fairy Fire, Long Strider, Vicious Mockery, Dissonant Whispers, and Sleep. Okay. Um, it's not really sorted by, like, cantrips, is it? Oh, I can press these buttons and do that. Okay, I see. And we have actions. Alright, that's kind of cool. Bonus actions. Bardic Inspiration. You get three uses of that. And that's because... Should mind my step. Oh, so C is the crouch. How do I get to my character? Is that blood? No, never mind. How do I get to my character screen? Uh, inspiration. Okay. Um, there's an inventory, equipment, spellbook, alchemy. Okay, yeah. So our charisma gives us a plus three. That's why we have three bardic inspirations. And there we are. Brave, halfling, luck, uh, naturally stealthy, and opportunity attack. Okay. We've got keychain, al alchemy pouch, stores your ingredients and extracts, camp supply sack. Okay. Oh, that's really nice. This is very divinity looking. Which is fine. Our AC is 14. Homely clothes, tasteful boots, and underwear. Gotta get our underwear. Simple jerkin, leather boots. And for anybody wondering, I did turn nudity off. Didn't want uh, YouTube to get on my case. Okay, so we now we have all these kinds of uh, stats we can look at, too. Alright. Musical instrument is equipped. There it is right there, my little flute. Alright, very cool, very cool. Don't want to spend too much time on this, though, because we want to get going. So, quest. Escape the Nautiloid. Find a way off the Nautiloid. We've been abducted by mind flayers and infected with some kind of parasite. We need to find a way off this ship. Okay. So that's our first goal. Get off this damn ship. We have a mind, a dead mind flayer over there. Is there like a, um... Tab or alt? So alt highlights the loot. But it doesn't highlight things like this. This is as far zoomed out as it can go. Can I, like... Oh, I can't. Okay. That's probably a good idea, huh? Someone else got out. Good. That's probably the Githyanki we saw, huh? Yes. Yeah, so there's no way to like highlight the interactive, interactable things. This is the pool that thing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eye. Well, that's disturbing. It is going to be nice that everything's voiced. That's going to be good. So reach toward the pool. We can investigate the pool or leave. Um, our investigation's not great. Maybe we could try it investigate the pool skill checks general tutorial some dialogue options require a skill check a dice roll that must meet or exceed a target number your character's skill adds a bonus to this roll all right click the dice click dice to roll go ahead oh hell yeah oh hell no <laughs> i don't think we succeeded guys and they really have to make a animation for nothing more than meets the eye. Hmm. Uh I don't I think my character's I mean, I know halflings are brave and all, right? But this might be a little too much. I'm just back away there. <laughs> I'm not reaching into the pool. I think that'd be a dumb idea, huh? Might be other survivors. Hope so. Okay. Go with the creepy dude. Got an onyx. Okay. Take that. Dead. Good. Good indeed. Alright, anything else? Another one of these. Wonder who's inside. How's the map look? General tutorial. This is the map of your surroundings. You can view quest locations and place custom markers. You can also teleport to waypoints. You discover by selecting them, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm guessing the lighter colors are where I can walk. We want to make sure we go up and around here and check these areas. Okay. We can go up here, it looks like. Ooh, a chest. Cartilaginous chest. 
got a scroll of fog cloud. The cloud blinds and heavily obscures creatures within it. All right. We got hyena, a hyena ear, uh, which is an ingredient. Okay. And some gold. Hell yeah. Certain items such as keys, ingredients, and camp supplies are sorted into handy containers in your inventory. That's nice. Do I have to do it manually? No. Okay, so it's in there. And it even gives me a little thing indicating that it's in there. Awesome. Okay. Anything else up here? No. Okay, let's head on down here. Is there a way to, like, highlight my... Let me, uh, look in the options real quick, guys. Um... I guess there's a lot of nudity in this game. <laughs> Share private moments? What does that mean? By default, certain scenes are private. This means that in multiplayer, the Oh, okay. I don't care about that. Turn-based highlights. I'm looking to see if there's a way to, like, put, like, a, an effect around my character. That's what I was hoping to find. I don't see anything. Okay. Might have to look into that stuff kind of, kind of in the next hour, in my own time. All right, so we can go up here. Where the hells are we? Uh, we're in hell, buddy. Rook, we're we're not in a good good spot, my friend. We were just enjoying our time at the tavern, drinking some ale, talking up the ladies. A rune slate. Visions project into your mind. A nautiloid hurtling through the plains, resplendent with psionic energy. Hmm. Okay. Oh, what's this? I saw some... Oh, what's that? Is that all that's up here? I oh, know, it keeps going. Should mind my step. It's a little hard to... It's a little dark in here. Should have took uh, dancing lights or something. Another chest. More gold, hell yeah. Look at us go. Can I jump down there? Maybe or, or, or can I like click on the map and go there? No. Okay. Oh, I can. Hell yeah. Ow. Okay. That was bad. <laughs> that was an unnecessary point of damage to take. Don't forget we are on uh, tactician level difficulty. Restoration. I got my hit point back. Oh, I can go back to here. Oh, that's nice. Sphincter? Uh. Oh, that's nasty. How do I go into stealth? That's what I need. Huh? Who's here? There's a goblin. Images of goblins, their habits and histories flash into your mind. So are they are they studying us? Something good here, I hope. I didn't bother to take the gold off of them. Eldritch table over there. There's another thing. The schematic of a nautiloid flashes into your mind. Nerves, sinews. As much living being as ship. Hmm. In a brain jar. Can I take that? No. Nah. Vicious chair. Oh, yeah. I am the master now. Oh, wait. We've got more of these things. It's kind of hard to... Wait. Why am I not... I guess I can't click on those ones. No, oh, that's a shame. Yeah, I get it. You're trapped. Just hold your horses, you creepy people. Mind flare horticulture. Wonderful. A thousand years of humanoid history. Elves, dwarves, humans, and more flash behind your eyes. Okay, another chair over there. Yeah, they've definitely been studying us, I guess. 
neural apparatus. Is that what's talking to me? Oh, shit. Brain jar, brain jar. We are here. Here. Huh. Hello? Oh, that's gruesome. Yes. You've come to save us from this place. From this place you'll free us. The exposed brain quivers in expectation. Please. Before they return. They return. Who am I talking to? A man or a brain? I think you're past the point of saving. Tell me what to do. You sound afraid. Why? Um... Uh, who am I talking to? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer. A minion of the mind flayers who abducted you. Okay, so I've got some knowledge. Heard about these guys anyway. Well, that's not good, is it? I think your past point of saving, you sound afraid. Why? I destroyed the brain. Why are you afraid? Talking about the Gith Yankee. Uh, do we help it? What do you want me to do? Tell me what to do. Remove us from this body. From this case. Free us. Please. Sonic presence. Oh, yeah. There Investigation inspect the exposed brain. Strength, dexterity, destroy the brain. Let's inspect it. Come on, big roll, big roll. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. You notice a demon, a swelling of the brain, causing pressure where it strains against the shell of the skull. I mean, I feel like we shouldn't do this, right? I, I don't think this is a... I don't know. I don't know. I mean, how good of... Are we... Are we so good of a person that we're dumb? Like, I don't think so. Let's destroy the brain. What are you doing? Oh, God, Rook! Rook, uh, you have... Get a sharp rock or something, man. Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Unnecessarily brutal, man. I don't know if I'd done... Yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Brains. Yeah. Curious. Yeah, I mean, like, these things have imprisoned us, right? We know that it's a minion of the Mind Flayer. Like, why would we help it? I feel like that would be a really dumb thing for us to do. Oh, can we uh, loot him? I just doesn't have anything on him. Okay. Hopefully that wasn't a companion. <laughs> he's dead now. Alright. Back down we go. Okay. Uh, I think that's everything in this area. Yeah, that's over there where we found uh, the one things, right? Yeah, okay. Let's go this way. Oh, I can move my camera like this. Oh, okay, and then we can center it back on him by doing that. I saw that, yeah. Okay, cool. Man, she's got some hops. Abomination. This 
Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whew. That, that's 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 much better than uh, <laughs> what you were going to do. I don't think I could have beaten you. Uh, what made you think I was a thrall? Who are you? We need to figure out where we are. What do you suggest? Who are you? Who am I? Your only chance of survival. Uh, okay. What, uh, do you have a name? What made you think I was a thrall? Oh, we're being turned into mind flayers. Uh, that's not good. <laughs> there must be something we can do. We can do nothing until we escape. That must be our priority. First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the material plane. Hey there, buddy. Alright, I think we're about to have our first combat, guys. Combat! Alright, here we go. Your turn. Combat tutorial. Get ready to fight. Combat happens in rounds, and each participant gets a turn to act. The game pauses around you during combat, so you have time to plan your actions. Good, I'm gonna need it. Okay, so, let's take a look at what we have. We've got... There's three uh, imps. Each one has seven hit points. I only have eight hit points. She has 12. She's a fighter. Okay. So. We'll probably want to switch to our ranged weapon, right? How do we do that? Use ranged weapon set? Oh, okay. Hold on. That's all we have. We have our fist and a crossbow. So we definitely do want to use our ranged weapon. So we can use piercing shot. Why would we not do piercing shot? This is a weapon action. That's a weapon action. So I'm guessing... Is this like harder to hit? Does it give me like an accuracy? 95% with that. 95% with that. So we should definitely use that, I think. And we're going to attack this guy because we're going to send her... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to send her over here to deal with them. There we go. Got a gaping wound on him. And then we have movement left, right? So we're going to step back over here. Maybe over here. And... Do we dare use a bardic inspiration already? No, no, no. We don't want to waste all those right away. Um, how do we end our turn? No, it's right there. End turn. Okay, so for you, you've got second wind, you've got all your common moves here. Definitely be using our long sword. So you can lacerate, which is 44, wait, it's 1d10 plus 3, and you can make them bleed. Again, I don't really know why you'd use the regular one. I mean, this has to be harder to hit it. Oh, you have to move up to him first. Okay. So let's move up. My path be true. And then we want to lacerate. Good. One down. And then want to move you back over here a little bit. Hopefully that... Ah, it's probably right in the middle. The space part in the turn? It does. Okay. Oh, shit. So they're ranged. Or at least that one is. This one has an axe. Goes in. Gets a one hit on them. Okay. You're going to do range attack on him. 
Finish him off. Got him. All right, you're gonna move up. Have to keep going. And turn. You're gonna get in there and take him out. There we go, easy. This is gonna be an easy game, guys. Well, thank you. Some allies can join you on your adventure. You can control them the same way as you do your own character. Click on companion's portrait to take control of them. There we go. All right, uh, before we end this episode, because we're getting close. Oh, that is stealth. It's not crouch, it's stealth. Okay. Let's take a look at what she is. So she's a level one fighter. She's got 17 strength, 13 dex, 15 con, 10 int, 12 wisdom, and very bad charisma. She's not, not very charismatic. That's fine. Oh, we got an approval bar here too. Relationship is neutral. Character has no strong feelings towards the, uh, towards toward Avatar. So my name's I'm in the Avatar. Okay. You are proficient in athletics, acrobatics, survival, and intimidation. So everything I'm not, I believe. Oh, uh, acrobatics we share. That's fine. Race is Githyanki. We've read about them. She's got 16 AC, which is very nice. She's got Githinki Halfplate Armor. This armor was forged to Vlathic's standards under the exacting eye of a Githinki Smith. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Githinki Boots. Lavishly decorated boots crafted on faraway planes from stolen metals and poached rubies. Nice. Oh, that's her underwear. <laughs> Don't need to read... Don't need to read about it, right? Mm. Built for function rather than fun. Oh, that makes sense. Doesn't look very comfortable, does it? Ah, my goodness. Tasteful boots and her clothes. And ex as exciting as a trade disposition. And as functional as brick. Nice. No unique weapons. Okay, and those are her stats, yeah. Really high strength and comp. Really, plus five? Oh, that's her saving throws. I didn't read. That makes sense. Tags. Githyanki, Humanoid, L Lazel, Lazel, and Fighter. Is that... I wonder how you pronounce her name. All right, guys. I think this is where we're going to end this episode. We got through character creation. We experienced a little bit of the game. Uh, wet your appetite a bit. Um, I might have the second episode come out the same day. It depends on how long it takes me to get these up. Uh... Don't count on it, though. Otherwise, I will see you again tomorrow in the next episode as we try and escape from the Nautiloid. This has been a lot of fun so far. I'm super excited and ready to go. I hope you, uh, <laughs> I hope you like Rook. Uh, he's an interesting character, I think. But um, until the next episode, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>